Hello, I'm Kingsley Singleton and welcome to another digital photo video lesson. For photographers, autumn is all about the rich, warm red and yellow tones of the turning leaves. But of course this is all dependent on Mother Nature playing along and upholding her side of the bargain, which as any photographer will tell you, very rarely happens. Whether it's the light, the weather, or just a general stubbornness in not offering up the kind of pictures you're after, things often have a habit of not going your way. However, as a digital photographer, armed with the power of Photoshop, you're much more likely to get the kind of results that you're looking for. In this example, we're going to turn all of these green leaves into something a little bit more autumnal, as you can see here. Now you might be thinking this looks like rather a complex job, but actually it's very, very simple. And we're going to do it using a function called selective color. So what is selective color? Well, it's not something that many photographers will have come across. And it's found here in the image menu under adjustments. However, we're not going to pick that option. We're going to use selective color in conjunction with an adjustment layer. So first, just bring up your layers palette, and I'll just drag mine in from the side there. And then we're just going to come down to this little icon at the bottom called the Create Adjustment Layer icon down this drop down menu, and we're going to pick Selective Color. And when you do that, you'll get your Selective Color Options palette appear on screen. Right, what have we got here? Well, essentially, it allows us to make adjustments to any individual color within the picture just by altering the values that go to make up this color. And to make those adjustments, we just push and pull these sliders. It's as easy as that. But before we actually change any of the colors in the picture, we're just going to come down to the bottom of the palette where it says Method, and we're going to change it from Relative to Absolute. And in essence, all this does is make the changes a little more dramatic. And that's what we all like, isn't it? A little bit of drama in our pictures. Also, make sure that the Preview button is ticked so that you can see any changes appearing in real time on the picture as you make them. And now, if I start moving these sliders around, you'll see, well, not a lot happens. And why is this? Why is nothing happening when we're adding all these different percentages? Well, the reason is we've got our colors set to reds. And if you look at our image, there's quite obviously not a whole lot of red in there. So, and this is a good little tip to use with any palette, just hold down the Alt key and you'll see there that the Cancel button turns into Reset. And if I just click that, it returns all of our values to Normal. And now we'll just click on this little arrow here and we'll pick Yellows. And what happens now when I make an adjustment to this Cyan slider here? Well, let's take a look. I'm going to take it down to minus 100%, and wow, look at that, all of those green leaves have turned yellow. Why has this happened? Well, it's because, despite the fact that those leaves looked pretty green, they're actually made up of quite a lot of yellow information. And by removing all of the cyan in those areas, we've made it much more yellow, because more cyan makes it green. Effectively, the yellow is becoming much more pure, and that's why we can see more of it. It really helps if you think of all of these colors here as separate pots of paint that go to make up the picture. So by removing any trace of cyan in the yellow areas, we're simply making the yellows a lot more vivid. And if I move the magenta slider to plus 20, you'll see that now the leaves are turning a nice orange color. Again, we're just making an amendment to how the yellow appears on screen. And finally, I'm just going to move the yellow slider up to 100%. Again, if we imagine it as a little pot of paint, if we introduce black, the colors darken. And if we take it away, they become lighter. And we're just going to leave that at zero. And what you should be able to see is that by controlling the values of colors individually, we're not affecting any of the blues in the image. So we've still got a nice blue sky that's contrasting way up high above our yellow leaves. Interestingly, if we pick green from our drop-down menu and try and move the sliders around to make a change, again, nothing much happens, because the greatest amount of color information in those leaf areas, even though they looked green, was actually yellow. So let's just come back to our yellow options 
and if you're happy with what you see, just click OK. Of course, because we're using our selective color as an adjustment layer, all you need to do to bring back the palette is just double click here in the Layers palette, choose Yellow again from the drop down menu, and you can see that all our information has been remembered, so we can tweak and fine tune it as much as we like. Just take the time to open up this palette on one of your images, or of course the start image, tree.jpg, which is on the CD, and have a little play around with the sliders, because that's how you'll gain a really good understanding of how they work, just by practicing and pushing and pulling them around. OK, let's just click OK to come out of the palette there, and what you'll see is that although we've made quite a dramatic change to the colour of the leaves, they're not perhaps quite as burning red as we'd like. So the next thing we're going to do is just click on our Selective Colour Adjustment layer and drag it into our Create New Layer icon here at the bottom of the palette. And just look what happens then. All of our colours are boosted and multiplied and we've got much more vibrant tones going on in the leaves. But there is one slight problem and that's this area of trunk here, all this bark here, it's, it's all gone a bit too red. So what we want to do is bring back some of the original colour in our background layer here. So the first thing we're going to do just to remedy this situation is just clip these two adjustment layers together. And we can either do that by coming up to Layer and down to Create Clipping Mask or we can simply hold down ALT on the keyboard and click in between these two adjustment layers. And now we're just going to click on the first of our selective colour adjustment layers, come over to the brush tool in the toolbox, and we're going to increase the size of the brush just by coming up to this little downward arrow here and moving the slider along up to around about, yeah, about 450 pixels should be fine and making sure that black is our foreground colour, we're just going to start painting in the trunk here, revealing the original background layer below, and giving ourselves some nice contrast between the fiery red leaves and the trunk itself. But actually, looking at that effect, it seems a little bit harsh, so we're just going to hold down Control and Alt and press Z a few times until we come back to the state where we hadn't painted any black into our mask. And then we're just going to come up to Opacity and reduce it to around 30%. And this, if we start painting in again, is going to give us a little bit more control and a bit of a nice, softer effect. As we get further up the trunk, we'll just zoom in a little, reduce the size of the brush, and continue painting back our original layer, making sure that we don't paint over any of the leaves. OK, that seems to be working out fine. Obviously you can spend a lot more time on this yourselves at home. But as a final little step, all we're going to do is just add a little lens flare to make it look like the sun is burning down through all these leaves. So just click back on the background layer, come up to Filter, and down to Render, and pick Lens Flare, and we get our little Lens Flare dialog box up, and using this preview window here, we'll just position the flare about where we want it to begin, increase the brightness a little bit, and we'll click OK, and our Lens Flare will be rendered onto our picture. So there you go, instant beautiful autumnal colour with no fiddly selections, no messy hand tinting, and we've ended up with a really nice, simple but effective picture. See you next time.